Exclusive. Hey everyone and welcome to our daily demo. I am joined by Joel, executive producer from EA, here to show us an exclusive demo of Alice Madness Returns. Thank you for coming. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to see the game. I've seen it a couple times already and you're here to show us a new level and kind of take us through the game. That's right. I mean, we're really excited, first of all, just to have uh, the ability to work with Spicy Horse again. Mm -hmm. You know, um, American Me's Alice was EA's very first mature title over 10 years ago. Wow, it's been a while. And we got the original team to get them together. So we got American McGee and RJ Berg, two of the key creatives. They founded their own independent studio in Shanghai uh, called Spicy Horse. They said, hey, you know, I think it's time we do another Alice. <laughs> and, and of course, CBA, we're really excited to bring that back. Yeah, and the fans are really excited too. So let's jump in and take a look because uh, part of Alice's appeal is, you know, the scenery. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the guys at Spicy Horse have done an amazing job with the visuals. What you're looking at here mm -hmm. is a little teeny section of the Hatter's Domain. And this is one of the first sections of Wonderland that Alice returns in. This is a very early section, sort of where their tutorials just left off. So we're just yeah. to, uh, just unrevealing sort of the first combat mechanics, the first platform mechanics being a little bit gentle at this point. Over the course of the game, Alice is going to go back and forth between London and Wonderland. And this isn't sort of the, the London of Mary Poppins. <laughs> this is uh, the London of Dickens, you know, poor and miserable. Aww, the darker one. <laughs> the darker one with the plague and uh, pollution and poverty and crime. Um, it takes place uh, as a direct sequel 10 years after uh, the original game. So Alice has been released from the asylum, but she's still um, a poor orphan. She's been taken in by the Houndstitch Home for Wayward Youth, mm -hmm. and the director is trying to help her get through her, her dark visions. And you don't need to have played the first game to kind of catch up with the story? No, absolutely not. Um, certainly if you have played the first game, there'll be a lot of fun references. Mm -hmm. And all the characters that you know and love from the original are back. So the Cheshire Cat is sort of your alter ego and guide, your conscience almost. Um, the Red Queen, the Mad Hatter, of course, the Caterpillar, the White Rabbit. They're all back in their own uh, twisted <laughs> and unique and dark, dark incarnations here. So this is inside the Hatter's Domain. Mm -hmm. um, I see that you're using the pepper grinder at this point. That's right. You have um, four weapons that'll be unlocked over the course of the game. Mm -hmm. And you'll see she's also picking up um, flowers teeth. and teeth. <laughs> yes. Flowers represent her health. You can see in the upper left hand the corner, the roses. Yeah. And teeth represent your upgrade currency. So over the course of the game, you're going to buy upgrades for each of the four weapons. Oh, okay. At this point, you normally only have access to two, the Vorpal Blade, mm -hmm. which is your light, fast melee weapon, and your Pepper Grinder, which is also sort of your automatic machine gun style <laughs> weapon. <laughs> nice range weapon. Yeah. Um, but we've also unlocked, uh, for the sake of the demo, we're gonna show you a little bit of the Hobby Horse, which is like a big, heavy club. Oh, that's useful. <laughs> yes, useful for crushing these little guys, these madcaps here. These are um, little grunts. You know, these are some of the first weapons you fight in the game, so they're not too bad to take out. And here we're being also um, gentle. These are the first, one of the first times you see the bolter flies, which are uh, little flying enemies that'll harass you if you don't take out their nests. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you also have at your disposal, though, um, the last weapon that we didn't talk about is the teapot cannon, mm -hmm. which is a nice, big, beefy, ranged, explosive weapon that you can uh, lob, you know, blobs of boiling hot tea to, to destroy your, your enemies from afar. So you have all your bases covered then. Couple yeah. Range weapons and. Yeah, it's range. a nice mix. And like the previous game, it's a mix of platforming and puzzle elements as well. That's right. Uh, we worked really hard just to get sort of the same. A uh, perfect stew mixture of platforming, mini games, combat, and puzzles. And one of the things that uh, we're most proud of is that uh, you'll see sort of the art style is really a beautiful combination of um, things that look handcrafted and painterly at the same time. We're not going for that sort of slick uh, photo reel that so many people are trying for these days. We really want to. Yeah make it feel fresh and and like you're stepping into a, a storybook or, or a painting. It's true, every scene you look at is just like a big painting. Uh, they really, I'm totally biased of course, but I think that <laughs> they really outdid themselves. No, and the color scheme, like it just everything contrasts and stands out. And as you travel between the different domains, um, 
nothing is reused. So every time you go around the corner, there's some new gorgeous piece of artwork that you haven't seen before. New enemies, new scenery, it's really gorgeous. Even her dress will change yeah, uh, as, as you go from, from domain to domain. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of a steampunky dress yeah. that's appropriate for, for the Hatter's domain, which is all about tea and clockwork. Uh, that's the theme for this domain. So you see the, the um, teapots there that the madcaps are coming out, out of. These are the original guards of the Hatter's domain. But what Alice is finding as she goes back into Wonderland this time is that um, things aren't the way she left it. Something has gone terribly wrong in Wonderland, and there's a horrible corruption that's invading uh, Wonderland. Now, because Wonderland is inside Alice's mind, um, as it becomes more and more corrupted, Alice actually becomes more and more disturbed. disturbed. Uh -oh. Um, so what she's doing here is essentially she is clearing Wonderland of some of the evils mm -hmm. that are present there and in, in a sense she's fighting for her sanity. Right. Wow. So there you saw uh, a new enemy which was the shielded madcaps. Mm -hmm. um, it adds, um, what we really wanted to do uh, for most of the enemies um, is give a little bit of a puzzle element to them. Yeah. There's a vulnerability that you have to learn how to exploit and then take advantage of. So in that case, you really needed to, you, you can't just hit them head on because they have these, these big shields. You won't really go anywhere if you do that either. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you can't just button mash them. You need to wait till they stick in the ground, dodge, and uh, exploit that. So one of the, the cool things about being in Wonderland is that she's no longer the poor um, orphan that she is in London. She becomes an idealized superhero version of herself, sort of free of all the frailties yeah. that a normal person has in the real world, like emotional and physical. And armed with weapons. <laughs> yeah, so armed with, he's now a badass Avenger um, taking on, uh, you know, all comers, taking on her, essentially, her, her personal demons. That was a snout that just fired. That was a snout. Um, and a giant pistol. So one of the things just before this section is that mm -hmm. the Duchess has put you on a quest essentially to collect uh, the wild pig snouts for oh, her for, for her stew. Okay. So fans from the original fiction mm -hmm. of, of the book, of course, will find all sorts of uh, references to, uh, oh, didn't quite make that one, <laughs> references to the original fiction. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why um, there's such a hardcore fan community about the original game and hopefully excited about this one, is that um, American and RJ did an amazing job of researching the story mm -hmm. and really um, respecting it yeah. as they created their own unique dark version of it. Yeah, for sure. So then, will there be some familiar areas that you've seen like in the previous game at all, or are they all completely redone? Or No, absolutely, they'll, they'll be familiar areas. Um, you know, the Hatter's Domain mm -hmm. is one that uh, fans of the first game would have been to, as well as uh, the Queen's Domain, the Mazes, um, and you'll see some familiar enemies mm -hmm. as well. Um, comparing them back to the original, though, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's shocking and eye-opening to see how far our technology has come and yeah, what, a, yeah, <laughs> what an amazing <laughs> job Spicy Wars has done of, of bringing them uh, to light for next gen. Looks great. So one of the cool things that snouts do is not only do you collect them, but they can mm -hmm. also give you access to, uh, to different areas. And you'll hear them sort of um, making little piggy noises <laughs> <laughs> as you travel through the world. Well, speaking of noises, what about the music? Can you talk yeah. a bit about that? There's three different composers. Of course, everybody uh, wonders, is, <laughs> is Chris Vrenna back? And yes, he is involved. Oh, good to know. He did create some of the music for the game, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, two other, one internal for, for Spicy Horse and, and, and another who did all of the London themes. So um, there's a really unique period music style yeah. when you're in London, and then it gets creepy and weird and, <laughs> and exotic when you when you head back into Wonderland. Yeah, you mentioned you'll be moving back and forth a lot. Yeah, over the course of the game, um, you're going to move back and forth about six times to the different domains. Okay. And what, what's really happening is that um, as she travels back and forth, there's some real interesting ties between London and Wonderland. 
she is becoming more and more disturbed and so Wonderland is becoming more creepy and decrepit Crazy. and corrupted and dark and and disturbing uh, as she becomes essentially more disturbed and crazy herself. Um, there's a memory. Yeah, there's another memory. So there's two different kinds. Mm -hmm. she, the whole game is actually almost like a murder mystery um, where she is repressing, uh, or sorry, she's recovering repressed memories um, about the mysterious fire that killed uh, her entire family 10 years ago. I mean, this is really it's the crux. Story. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not for kids. Yeah. This is uh, uh, an adult title that still mature um, rated. Yes, <laughs> definitely mature. Um, but she has never sort of um, resolved what happened with her family, and she's racked with survivor's guilt, and she is essentially recovering these memories about what happened mm -hmm. those ten years ago in that on that fateful, mysterious night where her entire family was killed. So sometimes you'll hear audio blips from the past. Sometimes you'll actually get almost Victorian puppet show theater displays of a re-remembrance of something. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait to see that. So looking forward to it. When does it come out and on what platform? So it's out on June 14th mm -hmm. um, in North America. It's on 360, PS3, and of course the original PC. All right. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and showing us the game. Yeah, absolutely. And that was our look at Alice Madness Returns. Now on with the rest of the show.